Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Kelly Heim, and it is my great pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker, Dr. James Greenblatt. Dr. Greenblatt is an integrative psychiatrist with over 20 years of clinical experience in adult and child psychiatry. He is the founder and medical director of Comprehensive Psychiatric Resources in Waltham, Massachusetts. He has written two books on the use of nutritional modalities for mental health. And in today's presentation, he will provide a concise overview of lithium, an essential mineral and one of the most intriguing substances in psychiatry. He will share his expertise on nutritionally relevant doses and how to use lithium properly as a dietary supplement. Please send your questions at any time through the question and answer box, and they will be addressed at the end of the talk. Welcome, Dr. Greenblatt. Great. Thanks, Kelly. It's uh, good to be here. And um, I do need to say that um, low-dose uh, nutritional lithium is probably one of the more um, exciting supplements uh, that I have found in my practice of over 20 years and really excited about kind of sharing that information today. I think the webinar will be relatively short and um, we'll have plenty of time uh, for questions. We're so focused on lithium as a medication that we forget that it is a, a mineral. It is a mineral that's been um, looked at, you know, for centuries, uh, first discovered in the 1800s. In the uh, early uh, 1920s, lithium was actually added to soft drinks, and these drinks were advertised um, for prevention of hangovers. And they were clearly marketed as um, use uh, following um, drinking episodes. Um, the history gets more interesting where lithium was then started to be used for a salt substitute. So lithium chloride was put in uh, salt shakers and what happened, which I think is the beginning of giving lithium a, a frightening name, was there were some um, kind of toxic uh, overdoses um, from too much lithium chloride um, in the salt shaker as a substitute for sodium chloride and lithium was kind of put in this uh, dangerous realm. And then it was um, in the 1940s and 50s where a psychiatrist discovered um, in his uh, animal experiment uh, lithium uh, is very calming. And in the 1970s, it was approved as a medication. Um, I think for those historians in the audience, it is um, somewhat interesting that it took uh, over 20 years with good available data for this um, medication to be approved for uh, treatment. And now um, there's increasing interest in looking at lithium, which we'll talk about um, uh, low-dose micrograms of lithium as a uh, preventative agent and as a um, nutrient with a, a daily uh, requirement. When you look at your multivitamin package um, and you see a list of ingredients as they're getting more complicated, you, you see a large list of trace minerals. But one of the things that um, uh, people forget, because lithium is such a, a light mineral, its uh, concentration um, is actually much higher in the human body than many of these trace minerals used in multivitamin mineral preparations. So this is concentration per billion atoms in the human body, and you see that lithium is higher than many of the trace minerals that we supplement with on a daily basis. The history of lithium is also kind of dotted with these magical powers of lithium water and lithium springs. So these are a few around the country that um, have uh, noted high amounts of lithium with kind of health claims going back um, to the Indians. There are many, many others around this country and around the world of uh, high lithium water uh, being associated with health. So what we want to try to understand is why this medication, uh, this, I'm sorry, this trace mineral, um, how it might work and be helpful for uh, many different uh, applications in psychiatry and what we need to do. 
If we take animals and we put them on a low lithium diet, uh, we have both reproductive problems, uh, dramatically shorter lifespans, there's abnormal uh, lipid metabolism, and there's very clear behavior, behavioral abnormalities on many animal species associated with low lithium diets. What's interesting and what we'll be talking about throughout this uh, webinar is the amount of lithium in the diet and the, the vast majority of lithium we consume is actually in the water that we drink. So lithium is in the soil. It's taken up by plants. Its highest concentrations are uh, eggs and grain products. Uh, then the water supply varies dramatically. And what we'll see uh, coming up is communities where the water supply has low lithium, there are different effects, uh, behavioral effects in the community than communities where there's high lithium in the water. When we talk about the highest dietary source of lithium, I don't have the research, but I have read this a couple of places, where the herb thyme as the highest concentration of dietary lithium. The supplementations of low-dose lithium, we use between uh, 500 um, micrograms uh, up to 10 milligrams as nutritional supplementation. And the medications, when we talk about lithium carbonate, we're talking about dosages of 180 to 360 milligrams of elemental lithium. So a very wide range of dosages being utilized for many different indications. And the dosage makes it either a poison or remedy, and there's nothing, um, I think, more appropriate as how to describe lithium. So as a practice in psychiatrist, uh, lithium has somewhat um, miraculous implications, um, but it's a medication that I can rarely use nowadays because of this list of side effects. The vast majority of people taking therapeutic dose of lithium have the uh, hand tremors, thirst, nausea, GI problems, and often sedation. As the dosage gets up, our individuals become more sensitive. We have um, kidney damage and interfering with thyroid function is the most common uh, implications of lithium toxicity. When we discuss some of the case histories in a few minutes, we'll talk about many patients who've done well with their uh, psychiatric uh, difficulties on the medication lithium, but due to uh, kidney damage or complete disruption of thyroid function, they had to stop their medication. So we've talked about the dose-dependent uh, kind of uh, effects. And let's really begin to understand, you know, what I think is truly remarkable about this trace mineral. So the research that's been gathered over 20, 30 years um, looking at the neurochemistry of, of lithium in both animal and human studies, we can see two very, very um, reproducible effects of this mineral lithium. One, it protects neurons. And then the other dramatic effect is that we can uh, provide new neuronal growth. And this has come through both basic science research as well as the psychiatric literature where uh, lithium has been shown to enhance um, neural connections. So again, um, John Cade, uh, Australian psychiatrist, um, was trying to understand um, actually how if uric acid played a role in some of the symptoms of his um, patients and to decrease the solubility of uric acid, he added lithium. And when this combination was injected into uh, animals, guinea pigs were the first, um, they became calmer and lethargic. And it was um, then he injected it in himself before he started using this um, uh, in patients. And that was the beginning of using the medication lithium for a major um, psychiatric illness. 
there are many different forms of, of lithium, um, lithium carbonate, lithium chloride, uh, lithium orotate uh, appears to be the most common um, capsule. There's some literature showing that it is uh, more easily um, bound and there's increased bioavailability. When we use lithium orotate as a supplement, and we'll talk more about, uh, rarely do we have any side effects. Uh, and rarely do we get blood levels. I used to check lithium levels when I started anyone on nutritional lithium, and I've only gotten blood levels on those with uh, kidney damage. Here, I just wanted to kind of list the, the vast kind of array of improving uh, brain health with lithium and uh, research is supporting kind of moods, um, behavioral support, aggression, impulsivity, and the newer research is around memory and cognition, and we'll talk a little bit about longevity. And, uh, you know, from the list, you can see um, my excitement in such a, a simple mineral having such a profound range of effects on brain health. Um, this is uh, two studies, one looking at uh, an earthworm or a form of worm, um, and then a uh, human study. But um, two studies clearly showing that uh, lithium chloride extends uh, the lifespan, lifespan in this worm. And then this uh, Japanese study looking at um, large, large populations that those with higher lithium concentrations in the water supply had um, longer lifespan. This is, I believe, some of the most dramatic literature that we have that um, looks at how to measure um, kind of behavioral effects and brain effects of the amount of lithium in the drinking water. So we have studies from uh, Texas, the United States, and throughout the world, Japan, Austria, and in England. And in these studies, they looked at a number of different communities. So in Texas, they sampled water supplies in different parts of Texas. And what they were able to show, and this is literature going back to the 1970s and 80s, that those areas with little or no lithium in the drinking water, there were higher crime rates and higher mental health problems than those areas where there was higher lithium in the drinking water. And the studies have been replicated over the years in uh, Asia and Japan and Austria and England. And again, the same findings. If there's communities in the same country with lower levels of lithium in the water, we find more crime and behavioral dysregulation than we would if there's high levels of lithium in the water. This was a study um, published uh, a while ago uh, with very low dose lithium, looking at 400 micrograms daily. Uh, 24 individuals with aggression, impulsivity, and uh, multiple social transgressions, for lack of a better word. And on this, in this four week course, course there was improvement in energy, mood, and disposition. We have many, many studies now looking at low-dose um, lithium for cognition and memory. The uh, clinical trials range from dosages here in uh, micrograms, 150 to 600 micrograms, to actually uh, dosages uh, from 150 milligrams to 300 milligrams. Here's a study um, from last year looking again 300 micrograms for a 15 months in aging population and those on the lithium group again the amount that you might get if you lived in a community with high amounts of lithium in the water had time as an herb daily that they had improved performance in a mental status examination compared to controls. Again, it was a 15-month study 
but statistically significant at around three months. This again, um, more recent study, a double-blind placebo-controlled trial looking at um, biomarkers in the CSF fluid and lithium um, supplementation here was able to modulate concentrations of the P-tau protein, which has been uh, lots of research done associated with um, uh, disruption of brain health. So lowering the concentrations is associated with brain health. Again, on low-dose lithium, we rarely get any side effects. I think we're all familiar with glutathione as the major antioxidant in the brain, and uh, lithium supports the expression of multiple forms of one of the uh, enzymes associated with glutathione, the GST. So I just wanted to share uh, some of the research looking at the wide range of neurochemical um, theories as to how lithium is helpful. Uh, the, the precise mechanisms are really not clear. Um, we could go through many, many studies looking at different um, theories, and the reality is we still don't understand how this simple trace mineral uh, could be so effective for mood. A lot of uh, my interest is in uh, essential fatty acids and the relationship between the immune system and the brain, and new research demonstrated that lithium works by affecting um, the omega-3 fatty acid DHA into a very um, significant um, immunological marker with neuroprotective actions. Um, we've all heard of uh, BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. As levels of BDNF goes up, we have improved mood, less anxiety, and less cognitive and memory problems. So lithium has also been associated with um, elevating levels of BDNF. And here, a study a few years ago looking at this more carefully, um, again, BDNF um, being associated with lithium, promoting healthy BDNF levels. So I have uh, notebooks um, with hundreds of articles of varying effects of lithium and brain function. And um, this I picked up on a plane a couple of years ago. It was uh, Discover, Discovery Magazine, and it was a front page article. And it was um, beginning to explore some of the research uh, that's been done for many years and some of the newer research. And I think the title um, is really the concern for all of us. So lithium, a simple metal, oldest drug, it might protect the brain, one problem, there's no profit in it. So for a pharmaceutical to get FDA approval, um, for m more neuroscience research, uh, much of it is pharmaceutically sponsored money. And because lithium is such a simple, inexpensive trace mineral, there's very, very little likelihood that more research will be done on some of these um, amazing uh, properties. Uh, we'll be happy to share with you um, articles and references if you're interested. I want to shift now to some of the clinical work that I've been doing. I've been using uh, lithium or tape probably for over 20 years, and um, I can share with you many, many uh, really dramatic case stories. So I, I thought I would just share some, um, some buzzwords to have. Um, to help us think about lithium as a trace mineral, as a nutritional supplement, rather than a medication. And, and the words in a clinical history that kind of perked my interest would be things like irritability, a road rage, um, family history, and uh, violence or, or aggression. 
When we talk about irritability, these are cases that um, you know I've seen within the past year. We have um, young children as young as four to uh, this 43-year-old was actually a, a therapist, clinician, treating patients on a regular basis with a, quite a good reputation. And uh, what she described to me was that she couldn't understand why she was so irritable and angry all the time. And on a low-dose lithium, um, she broke down tearful in my office as she thought about how she treated her children and her husband uh, for so many years with this chronic state of irritability that was completely reversed with nutritional lithium. I recently saw a 43-year-old um, with what you and I referred to as road rage, uh, uncontrollable anger based on um, being cut off in, in the road or other driving kind of incidences, and that was dramatically changed with low-dose lithium. One of the more important things I, I think uh, I can share with you about um, nutritional lithium is looking at, uh, deeply at the family history. So with a family history of substance abuse or mood disorders or this irritability, aggression, or violence, that is also an important key um, that uh, lithium might be helpful for the individual patient that we're working with. So again, the patient might not have major psychiatric illness, might have subtle um, symptoms, but that family history is important. And then domestic violence is such a huge problem in our society, and um, I have also seen many, many cases of uh, aggression being uh, completely resolved with low-dose lithium. How do you test for lithium? Well, most uh, individuals, if we did a blood test, would have no detectable lithium in our blood supply unless we were taking uh, medications of lithium. So what I have used over the years is a trace mineral analysis in the hair. And these are just kind of two cases. Um, as you can see, lithium is detected in a hair sample uh, on your left as you're reading the screen. And then on the right there with the two arrows, there's actually no detectable lithium um, in a hair sample of this 20-year-old uh, patient. Um, this was the example of the young child, the four-year-old, um, where there was no detectable lithium. Using uh, micrograms of lithium improved um, anger and rage attacks. Uh, this is a, a, a gentleman, an eight-year-old boy, um, symptoms of um, overactivity, hard time listening, unable to sit still, and very aggressive and um, referred by teachers as a bully. And as the family put him on a vegetarian diet before I had seen them, um, this behavior increased. And with this individual, uh, I did not get non-detectable lithium. As you can see, there's a, a lithium level, although it's low, and based on his symptoms, we treated him um, with um, nutritional lithium and uh, with dramatic improvement. Sorry, I don't have that slide. But oftentimes, the majority of patients we're treating would have non-detectable lithium in a trace mineral hair sample, sometimes if the clinical symptoms are such that they might benefit, um, and this is one example of uh, Noel, the eight-year-old aggressive boy, that uh, improvement on nutritional lithium. Uh, this is a, uh, a woman who was um, very aggressive, had to be taken out of the home for um, aggressive behaviors. Uh, there was complicated psychosocial um, as well as a history of um, deafness and adoption, and his was her um, hair sample of lithium, non-detectable, and um, she was also placed on other supplements. But you know, within three months, she was able to say quite clearly that she can think more clearly and feeling better and more calm 
and the school was able to document the um, same improvement. Uh, she had been on medications, but there was absolutely no change to the medications that she was using um, when I saw her. And these are the only interventions, um, some of these uh, nutrients that you see. And um, when anything works this quickly, this was um, within a couple of months, uh, it's usually lithium. The nice part of lithium is that it's easily absorbed, almost 100% is absorbed from the small intestine and it's distributed throughout body tissues. Um, we talked about um, hair, hair samples uh, rise and um, we can increase levels and we do repeat testing uh, within three months. And the brain tends to retain more lithium in the uh, cerebellum and the cerebrum than other parts of the brain. The um, studies vary quite widely. Um, we typically use the lowest dose around 500 micrograms and go up to five, uh, I'm sorry, go up to 10 milligrams if we're treating um, symptoms. Because of the importance of being able to utilize the lower dosages, we've been able to come up with a um, lithium citrate um, microgram a dose in a liquid form. And what some um, psychiatrists that I know who've been so impressed with the literature, there's actually um, major researchers um, around the country, they use a prescription lithium citrate and individuals have to use kind of micro droppers to get this lower dose. So we thought it was really important to develop a, a product where we could get the micrograms in an easy to use um, dropper. The nice part of uh, utilizing lithium, particularly if I have a, an, an assay with no detectable lithium, is that oftentimes I can see results, sometimes dramatic, with aggression within a couple of weeks up to four weeks. So it's, as a clinician, it's a very powerful tool um, with uh, no side effects that we use all the time. I think the literature on the neuroprotective effects to, in terms of cognition and memory, it's much longer term. And this is a slide that, that I started with and uh, hopefully I can engage you in uh, more questions um, in the question and answer period because we have this uh, essential trace mineral that is uh, in our soil and varies dramatically from uh, area to area around the world and around the country. And we have 50 or 60 years of research looking at both behavior, emotions, uh, cognition, and even longevity. And I think I've been uh, sharing this enough with you. And uh, I will kind of stop there and um, hopefully can answer your questions. Again, more than almost any uh, nutrient that I've talked about and used, I've been using um, lithium for about 20 years now and seen a very, very wide range of clinical implications that hopefully we can talk more about. Thank you, Dr. Greenblatt, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending. I know we have a lot of questions to answer, so we will begin our Q&A session at this time.